Bullard High School, most recently serving as the Bullard Bells captain. Hannah will be attending Arkansas University this fall and majoring in biology with a minor in psychology on a pre-med track. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome our valedictorian, Miss Hannah Mark. Congratulations, class of 2022. We did it. Together we have passed through phases of binge watching Match the Sim Ruby, Silly Dance, Just Dance Marathons, playing with the rainbow parachute and plastic scooter boards at field day, your mom jokes. Some of us still aren't over those. Singing Hannah Montana at the top of our lungs, water bottle challenges, subway surfers, whipped coffee, wearing masks, and finally celebrating our graduation. It all seems surreal. I've been looking forward to this phase since I was in kindergarten at Bullard Primary School when the senior class of 2010 walked by with bright faces, wearing blue gowns and offering me a hug. Somehow now we're 12 years older, sitting in the chairs the past senior sat in. We used to think they were so cool. I'd like to thank each and every one of you sitting in this stadium today. Whether you are a staff member, friend, family member, or fellow graduate, you have all contributed to the success of our senior class, preparing us and walking the stage before you tonight and moving our tassels from the right to the left. Personally, I could not be standing here today without the support of my teachers who challenge me to grow daily, even when I do not want to. Special shout out to Cash, Sophie who's garden tools, and my lifelong best friend. You all make me laugh and live in the little moments. Also, Celsius energy drinks, my cat who is laying with me here all night as I write this, my dad who has shown me the value of hard work, my mom who serves as my role model in strength and love, and my sister whose goodness inspires me to become a better person. Most of all, I give credit for all my successes to God. There are many others to thank, but we need to get this speech moving. I do not want to be up here too long. Speaking in front of you all makes me just a little bit nervous. <laughs> A fun fact not many people know about me is that I love to paint. My Mimi and mom have a creative gene and they passed it on to me. I find it an excellent way to free my mind and distract me from the chaos of life. As a kid, I finger painted it with this Curious George paint set. It contained the primary colors yellow, blue, and red. There is no reason or rhyme to the way I smeared paint onto the blank piece of paper. I could create anything I wanted. I found warmth in the yellow sun, passion in the red roses, and peace in the blue sky I believe I painted. I could create any color on the spectrum the base colors the set provided me with. I found that smearing the yellow and blue make green grass and leaves, the blue and red make purple people eaters, and the red and yellow make orange butterflies. Most importantly, all the colors mixed together make a brown that outlines the elements of my work. It finalized the piece. To my parents, the colors probably look like a jumbled up mess, but I thought I was the next Picasso. While we may not all be Picassos, as we graduate tonight, will have the opportunity to create a new masterpiece for our lives. We'll have the ability to pick out the meaning of our color palettes and our psychological motivators for the process of our finished paintings. Although we use the same three primary colors to paint our portraits, we each have the freedom to define the colors of our lives. To some, yellow correlates with warning, red with anger, and blue with sadness. You may think, moving away from home is scary. There's a yellow streak. My parents divorced. There's a red streak. I lost my friends. There's a blue streak. These streaks can seem 
seem to taint you and overpower your entire canvas, only revealing an abstract mess. This prompts your mind to focus only the darkness of disorder. Nevertheless, this is an illusion set up by the enemy. To others, yellow parallels optimism, red to love, and blue to harmony. They believe obstacles in life happen for a reason according to God's divine plan. They keep in mind growth still occurs in the dark. There is no reason to make a permanent confining barrier in your mind out of a temporary worldly challenge. Ten years from now, it will not matter which dress you wore to prom, how many tassels hang around your neck right now, or even if you stole your mom's car and drove to the beach in the middle of the night. Wait, that doesn't really relate. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> what will matter is how you perceive these situations to set yourself up for life. We all have the opportunity to succeed as long as we move forward with from our past and create a better future for ourselves. Barnett Newman painted a famous piece entitled, Who's Afraid of Red, Yellow, and Blue For? This was punched, kicked, and spat on by a student who felt threatened by the vulnerability of the piece. Rather than resenting the student who disrespected his art, Newman embraced the changes, deeming the destruction necessary to move forward with the meaning of the piece, which inspired artists to express themselves through imperfect art. With an array of abstract and perfect colors in our lives, we must carry a dependable constant, someone to outline your mural and keep your overall goals in sight within a world of adversity. We all know from our recent experience with senioritis that motivation can be difficult to find. However, we must turn to God to look for strength to keep going. Through Him, we have the freedom to better define our lives, turning our burdens to blessings. He heals our sinful, broken nature and makes us whole. He washes away the colors of negativity and restores them with colors of positivity, altering our outlook to see that even after the harsh, cold winters of spring and roaring storms, flowers still flourish and prosper. He creates a uniquely designed blueprint for each person's life, taking faith as small as a mustard seed with tangled streaks of color and nurturing it into a thriving flower. In a way, we are all like sunflowers with God's love. Like the sunflower following the sun, we seek ways to grow and change directions to better follow his plan for our lives. We will stand proud and tall with our, black, with our backs to darkness, inviting others to relish in God's light alongside us. He provides the path for a firm foundation, mending our broken, removed pieces of color together, designing a beautiful mosaic allowing us to see the full painting of our lives in the end. As we graduate, remind yourselves of who you are at your core and allow your morals to guide you in your future endeavors. Become someone your kindergarten self will look up to and say, wow, I wish I could be her. Remember, you have the freedom to change your perspective through your hardships and help others bloom along the way. Above all, seek God's outline and you will find your inner masterpiece and purpose.